What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to work with MongoDB in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, now in order to use MongoDB in Python, we're going to use a package called PyMongo. But first of all, we need to make sure that we have MongoDB installed and running on our system so that we have something that we can connect to, a service that is running where you can create your databases, collections, uh, documents, and so on. And we're then going to use PyMongo to connect to that service in Python. So the first step is to go to mongodb.com. So you can either find hopefully a link in description down below, or you can just Google MongoDB installation Windows, MongoDB installation Linux, MongoDB installation Mac, and so on. Uh, and you will find these installation guides here. Now, uh, on Windows, you have to download an installer and do some additional configuration steps as described here. On Linux, the installation process is completely different. So it doesn't make sense to show one specific process here because it's very different from operating system to operating system. So as I said, on Windows, you have an installer, you have this graphical user interface where you have to install it as a service and provide some paths and so on. On Linux, you have to pick your distribution here. In my case, Ubuntu, because I'm using Pop OS, which is based on Ubuntu. Um, and here, what you have to do essentially is you have to install this, uh, this package here, which is for managing keys. Then you run this curl command to add the key. Then you run this command here to add um, the repository, I think, um, or the package source. Then you update your packages. Then you install mongodb-org. And then you scroll down here. Once everything is installed, you can run sudo systemctl start mongod to run the service. You can also check if the service is running with status and you can stop it with stop. I don't want to go through a specific installation process, but uh, at least on Linux, it worked flawlessly. So I just had to run this command, run this command, run this command, this command, this command, and then you can just start it with this command. But the instructions are quite clear. So depending on your operating system, just pick uh, the documentation, the installation guide and go through it. I'm sure that you're, you're going to be uh, competent enough to install this. So on my system now, let's see if it is running. I'm going to open up the terminal. And in my case now, let's see if MongoDB is, uh, no, it's inactive. So I have to start it. So I'm going to copy this command here. And I'm going to start the MongoDB service. And once it's started, we can connect to it uh, directly with a Mongo shell. So we can type Mongo sh, and this connects to our uh, service here. So you can see localhost port 27,017. Uh, so 27017. Uh, and here now I can just use the command line to do stuff in the database. So I can say use and I can say my database or something like that. Uh, now I'm using my database and here now I can on demand just create um, collections and in those collections I can insert documents. Now, for those of you who don't know anything about MongoDB, this is not a MongoDB tutorial from scratch. I'm not going to give you a crash course into MongoDB. Uh, if you want that, let me know in the comment section down below. I can make a video on MongoDB itself. Today's the focus or, or today the focus is on using MongoDB in Python. Uh, but as a basic explanation here, MongoDB is a no SQL database. So a not only SQL database, a document database where we have JSON files uh, or a JSON like uh, format, we could say, and you have essentially databases in those databases, you have collections in those collections, you have uh, documents. So it could be like a database row would be a document, so to say. Um, and no SQL databases and uh, specifically MongoDB follows a base approach. So basic availability, soft state and eventual consistency instead of asset, which is the relational uh, paradigm. So the focus is on availability, not so much on consistency and structure and uh, integrity and predictability and all that. You have um, this demand for speed and this demand for flexibility and scalability and all that. So on MongoDB, I can have uh, maybe let me open up a text document to explain this. Uh, okay, actually, this file exists already. So let's call it whatever. 
Um, in a relational database, you have essentially a table, you have, for example, ID, name, age, and then you have one Mike 30 to Lisa 20 and so on. Uh, in a no SQL database, or at least in MongoDB, what you have is you have these JSON objects and they can look different. So I can have one object being name Mike and H30. Uh, but then again, the next could be name Lisa, and I can maybe not have age, maybe also have age, but I can also add something new like height is 170 centimeters, or something like that. And every instance can look differently. So I don't have to have the same structure, I can have different numbers of fields, I can add uh, a lot of different fields here. And then in the next one, I maybe only have name, it's very flexible. And um, you don't have to stick to a specific structure. So if I want to create now a new collection, let's say people, I can just say here, um, I can just say DB, which is a command for the database, and then uh, people. So I just assume people exists already, I don't have to create it really, I can just say uh, DB dot people, and then I can say insert one. And in here, I provide a JSON dictionary. And here, I'm going to just say now, name is Mike, and H is 30, for example. And I can run this and now you can see here acknowledge true, this is the ID of the object it, uh, that was automatically assigned. And then I can just say DB people find to get the contents of the table. And of course, I can instead of doing just Mike H 30, I can do Lisa also 30, maybe, or let's go with 20. And then I can add a new field height, or maybe let's go with interests and interests could be pointing to a list. And this list could be C++, Python, and maybe the piano, something like that. Then I could do find and you can see I have this object of the same relation, even though the structure is not the same. So that's the basic idea. And we're going to do now all of this in Python. And how do we do that in Python, as I already mentioned, with PyMongo. So we're going to install using pip, either pip or pip three install PyMongo. My case already satisfied. And once we have that we can create a new Python file here, main.py. And we can import from PyMongo, the Mongo client. And then we can create this client by saying Mongo client and here now we can either pass a host and a port or a connection string. So we can say here either localhost port 27017. This would work if I run this. If I enter something else, it should probably crash. No, it doesn't crash. Okay, so this alone would not be enough to see if it works. But it does work uh, if we do it like that. So I can say db equals client dot, uh, let's say, neural db neural database. Uh, and then I can say people is the people relation of this database. And then I can do some stuff here like, uh, actually, let's not go too deep into the code. But this would work. And probably or hopefully this would not work if I have some invalid port. Okay, it still works because we're not doing anything. So let me actually do something here. Uh, but let me also explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So I'm connecting to the MongoDB instance, I'm then referring to a specific database, maybe it doesn't exist yet. But if I use it without it existing, it's going to just create it, I'm calling it neural DB here. The same goes for the collection, I have a collection of people, even if I don't have it, I just create it by using it. And then I can say, for example, for person in people dot find, I can print a person. That is what I can do here. Uh, and this doesn't work as it seems. Okay, so maybe we have to use actually a connection string, and we don't have to use a combination of uh, port and host. Or maybe let me just check one more time if this works if I provide this is localhost. No, okay. Uh, or actually, maybe it does work, but we don't have any content. So before we give up here, let me just check if I insert something into the database, people dot insert one, so we're going to insert a dictionary name, Mike, and h 30. 
if that works. Collection is not callable. What did I mess up here? Oh, insert one written like that. There you go. Okay, now it works. So it also works with that connection string or with this combination of host and uh, port, but we can also provide a connection string. So we can say client equals Mongo client. And then if we open up a terminal and run the Mongo shell, you can actually see that we have a connection string up here. So it's MongoDB, localhost, port, and then some parameters. So I can actually copy this if I want to. And I can just paste this here. Maybe I want to remove the app name because it's not Mongo shell that's using this. Uh, but doing that, I'm also able to connect. So I can do it either like this or like that. Um, again, so the explanation now, without mistakes, we have the database we created on demand if it doesn't exist. Same for the collection we created, we use the people collection, we can insert again with the same command just written differently. Now instead of using camel case, we use a uh, snake case. So instead of saying insert, and then capital O one, we say insert underscore one to create a new instance in the MongoDB database, again with a dictionary here. And I can do the same thing with a different format. So name Lisa H 20 interests R C plus plus Python and what did I have before piano. Then this also works. And you can see that with find as we also saw in the Mongo shell, I can just list all the uh, people objects, all the people documents and here I can just print their information if I iterate over the output of find. Uh, and you can also see that I'm creating Mike every time I run the script because of course, I'm not deleting Mike, but I'm every time uh, now actually creating two people. So if I run this over and over again, you're going to see that I'm constantly going to get uh, new objects, Mike and Lisa. Uh, but yeah, we can do a bunch of different things here now. So this is the basic insertion. This is the basic finding. Uh, I can also get as a result the ID. So maybe I have multiple mics and multiple Lisa's, but all of them have different IDs. If you run this, you can see the object ID is never the same. So if I actually want to keep track of this object, even though everything inside of the uh, values here, so all these key value pairs other than the ID are the same, I can still identify a specific document with the ID. So I can say here, uh, when I create Mike, I want to get as a result, the object ID. So Mike underscore ID equals. And for this, I have to just say dot inserted underscore ID. And then I could go down here and I can print the Mike ID in the end, which is this one. So you can see this is no, this is not it. This is the mic that I'm actually looking for. This is the exact instance that we just created, even though all of those instances here are the same. When you look at name and age, they have a different ID. So that is how you can keep track of that. This is also how you can um, target specific um, documents, even if they have the same value, you can delete them, you can change them, you can do stuff with them, if you know their object ID. Um, now, for example, what we could do now is we could uh, run a query that says find all people with the name Mike. And if I do this, I can do it like that print, and then I can do a list comprehension person. So I'm going to just say P for P in people find and in find now I'm going to specify the condition that the name has to be Mike. In this case, I get a bunch of different mics. But I could also go ahead and say that I want the ID to be the specific ID of Mike. Now let's actually copy this one here. I think that is actually the one from before. Um, I hope it works like this. And we don't have to specify the object ID. Uh, I think we do have to do that. So let me just briefly see how this works. MongoDB object ID Python. There you go. Stack Overflow always a good source. 
So what we need to do here is we need to import from BSUN, which is basically the binary JSON format. So we're going to go into the code again from BSUN dot, uh, what was it, object ID, import object ID. And now we're going to call object ID. We're going to create an object ID with this ID. And then we can find this specific instance here. So this is on the fly preparation here for the video. Um, we can also have more, uh, not necessarily complex, but different kind of queries. So if you don't have to match the exact value, you can also say something has to be less than something. So I can maybe say, uh, give me all the people that have an age above 20 or below 40. And like below 40 would give us all of them. If I say below uh, 25, I would get only the Lisa's here. So I could say something like print list comprehension P, P for P in people dot find. And now instead of specifying exact values, I can specify a dictionary that says, what am I interested in? I'm interested in the age, but not in a specific value. I'm going to pass another dictionary in here with dollar less than LT uh, 25. And this would give us all the people with an age below 25. So no mics here. Um, so you can combine cores like this, you have greater than you have less than you have a bunch of different things that you can Google in the documentation, or you can look for in the documentation. But you also formulate your queries with this JSON type of format with these dictionaries, you specify the field, and then you specify what exactly you're looking for. Uh, when looking at this field. Uh, what else can we do? We can also count documents. So we can say, okay, how many people are there with the name Lisa? Uh, for this, I could just say print people count documents. And I can say where the name is Lisa 11 entries. And every time there should be one more when I run this, there you go. Um, so this is what you can do, you can also uh, go ahead and change values. So we can update the values for a specific instance here. Um, so let's say, for example, I want to uh, take this Lisa object here, and I want to change the age to 24, or actually to 27 so that we don't see it here anymore. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to say people dot update underscore one. The condition is that underscore ID matches the object ID of this particular Lisa here. And for this particular instance, we want to run the following instruction dollar set in quotation marks. And we want to set what we want to set the age to 27. So if I run this now, this should happen. And if I run it one more time, we should be able to see that there is a Lisa with the age 27. So we can update data like this as well. Now, since we have so many objects now, let's go ahead and uh, delete everything, or at least delete some of the entries. So let's go ahead and say, we want to delete uh, all the people that have an age uh, less than 26, or less than 25 is enough, actually, because we only have 20, 27 and 30. So we're going to say people dot delete underscore many. So it's not delete one delete many basically delete all uh, where the H is and then again, dictionary dollar less than 25. So if I run this now, it happens, I run this again. And we only have a bunch of mics here h 30. And we have um, also a bunch of uh, we have one Lisa 27. The reason we have uh, h20 down here is because of course, we run this delete command. But then again, we run the full script where we create again, another Lisa object, and then we have uh, 20 year olds here again. So this is how you can do that. Uh, and then maybe as a last thing that I want to show you here, because this is just as I said, a basic introduction into using MongoDB and Python, then we can build on top of that, we can maybe look at how to integrate this into Flask, Django, and so on. We can also do a MongoDB crash course in general, as I said, if you want that, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, but one last thing that I want to show you here is how we can group by and aggregate. So 
maybe we want to um, let's actually go ahead and delete everything here by saying 37. So now we should have only two objects here in the beginning. Um, let's maybe add another mic or three other or two other mics. One is going to have the age of 40. One is going to be 27 year old uh, or years old. And then we're going to have, uh, actually, we don't need the ID here. And then we're going to have Elisa, age 26. And then we're going to have some John, which is going to be, I don't know, 78. And he doesn't have any interests. And now what we want to do is we want to group by name and get the average age per name. So how old is the average Mike? How old is the average Lisa? How old is the average John in that uh, collection here in the people collection? And how we do that is first of all, we import from bson dot son, we want to import son son. Um, again, bson is binary JSON, essentially the format of MongoDB, which is used in a database. And what we want to do now is we want to say a pipeline is going to be defined as a list here. And in this pipeline, we're going to say, first of all, this dictionary here, dollar group, we're going to pass another dictionary here, or we're going to have the value of this key value per group, the keys group, and the value is going to be ID, and then dollar name, and then average h is going to be dollar average on h. And then the second part of the pipeline is going to be a sorting part. Um, so we're going to say here dollar sort. And here we're going to have son and a list of average h in descending order. So negative one. And then underscore ID, also in descending order as the second sorting field here. And then we can just say print, or actually, let's say first of all, results equal people dot aggregate using the pipeline, and then for result in results, print result. Uh, okay, I think I made a mistake here. What's the problem? Let me just double check here. Oh, I need a dollar in front of H. That should be it. There you go. So we can see here, average age for John is 78. Average age for Mike is 40. And I think the reason why we don't see Lisa is because I'm deleting everything below the age of 37. So let's run this again. Lisa is 23, Mike 35.4 and John 78. So this is basically how you work with MongoDB in Python. You create a client, you connect to your uh, either to your locally running database or to some remote database in the cloud, uh, some MongoDB database that's running somewhere online. You can use basic functions that you can also use in the Mongo shell, like insert one, find, count documents, update one, update many, delete one, delete many, and stuff like that. Uh, and then you can interact with your database by doing that, maybe as a sort of explanation, again, what are we doing here? We have a pipeline, we have a list of two things that we do. First of all, we group um, by name, and we get the average age per name. And then we sort by the average age and by the ID in descending order. And then we call the aggregate, uh, aggregate function to actually do this. So yeah, this is how you use MongoDB in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.